Nick. Oh, Nick. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Yeah, we lost Will. We lost Will. Okay. Just for a minute, but I knew you couldn't hear us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all good. Well, we're live anyway, so we'll uh, we'll hold on a sec here before we get started. Um, <laughs> It's all good. Uh, yeah, we're uh, we're getting close to the last week of Hacktoberfest. You might have seen the splash screen there a second ago. Um, any uh, thing we want to talk about Hacktoberfest before we jump in on the stream here, Christina? Yeah, we just put out a post to yesterday, I think it was. Hold on, I'll find it. Um, just kind of reminding everyone that, hey, everything's kind of um, wrapping up, uh, giving you some resources if you still want to do stuff. Um, okay. And so you can check that out. I will drop that in the chat. And oh, look, we have well. Yeah, we got. We were just talking about Hacktoberfest for a second there. Uh, all right, cool. We got everybody here now, so we're gonna get started. So welcome, as always, to the Dev Twitch stream. My name is Nick Taylor. I'm the lead software engineer at Forum. Forum is the software that powers Dev. And I'm Christina Gorton, the developer advocate at Forum. And today we have Will Johnson. Normally, uh, Nick and I are saying what chat and now we don't have to because yeah, will yeah. is here uh so will tell we, us about we yourself. got him we caught the pokemon we got him <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm happy to be here uh, my name is will johnson i am a developer advocate at off zero uh brand new just started there about two months ago so uh, i'm learning a lot definitely got the the fire hose attached because uh, it's a, a lot of information to pick up but yeah um i'm in, i'm enjoying it and uh happy to be you know, on this great team with people like Sam and James um, and Tyler, like kind of some people I knew before I started working here. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm a self-taught developer. Um, so did a lot of learning on my own, ended up transitioning to tech mm -hmm. about two years ago. Uh, and okay. here I am, lo lo loving every bit of it. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I, I didn't realize it was only two years ago that you, you made the transition. I felt like you've been in here longer, but uh, I guess that's <laughs> that just shows how much you, you've been busting your butt in here. So, uh, but yeah, no. So, yeah, awesome. Great to great to have you here. Uh, and you mentioned us. I know we're going to we're going to talk about Framer Motion today um, in, a, in a bit. And um, we're going to talk about you got a new course drop in with that. Um, but before we get started, you mentioned Oz Zero, so uh, it'd be kind of curious, like uh, if if you wanted to maybe talk for a few minutes about like just the path to get into DevRel, because this is something we've had a few people on the show in regards to DevRel. Christina's in Dev Advocacy now, and it's something that people are always asking. Me. It's it seems to be a very popular role that people want to do, and people are always asking how do I get into DevRel? And lots of people always have answers, but just curious on your thoughts about that and like maybe kind of what your path was to get there. I know you said you started off as self-taught, so I guess that's where the journey starts, but. Uh... Yeah, sure. I'll be happy to go um, a little bit more depth into it. So um, for people who are, I'll start with for people who are looking to get into uh, DevRel. So, uh, the point of DevRel, if you're, you're not really uh, well versed on, is basically to be a advocate and a connection to the developers who are using a particular product to the people who are making it. Usually, it's that you you're in the developer community, you're talking, you're chatting, but you're not selling. You're not saying, mm -hmm. "Hey, use Off Zero or use you know X Y Z." Um, yeah, yeah. You're you're more in the community, like helping, answering questions even asking questions and just being like a steward for the community. And then you take that information and then you bring yeah. it back to the product managers um, and stuff like that. So if you were looking to get into DevRel, I would say one of the things that you want to be is you want to be uh, like community focused and really focused on helping others and really have like that at the, the front of your mind is how I can make people better. How can I solve problems for people and, uh, you know, make their lives a little bit easier um, yeah. And it, it doesn't necessarily have to be with, you know, um, your particular product. Like you could, you know, mm -hmm. help people with data structures and algorithms if that's your thing. Or you know how yeah. I you know I like I like animation, so I want to make uh, content about animation. Me but at the too. End of the day, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so at the end of the day, you're helping people. So that's kind of like the main goal. So if you're looking into DevRel, mm -hmm. I would definitely think of. Look for ways of how you can help people will probably be the, the best way to get yourself started. And that could be blogs, yeah. tutorials, 
podcasts, video courses, like whatever's your thing, you know, mm -hmm. Twitter spaces, whatever. Um, look for ways where you can add value and help people out. Yeah, and I would add to that that some of the roles you could have before getting into that if you wanted to, some people can go directly into uh, DevRel. Sometimes you it's a, a different path in there. So things like community managers where you're more technical. So community manager is a different role, uh, but maybe you're focusing on a technical community. That's a great pathway into becoming a developer advocate. You also could be a yeah. technical writer. Again, if you're teaching people, uh, you're helping people. There's a lot of developer educator roles right now. I keep seeing those yeah. pop up everywhere. <laughs> That's a great pathway into DevRel. Uh, so there's other <laughs> yeah. ways to like it. And, and then you don't have to just be DevRel if you don't want, because there's those other roles as well. So uh, those are other places where you can help in, and teach people. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, I, I really like what both you said there, because like, and it, I know, because uh, it, it always says, it, it always sounds weird when you say you follow somebody on Twitter, but I've <clears throat> been following Will on Twitter for a while now, and I always see him putting out content, always helping people, you know, telling people, hey, I appreciate you. That's great stuff you got out there. And I, I think it's something that a lot of people forget to do. Like, I don't like, you know, I can think of like previous jobs I had, like I worked in internet technical support, like before I was a programmer and it's like, nobody calls into internet technical support to say, Hey, your internet <laughs> is amazing. Keep it up. You know, people, people like to complain. And so it's, I think it's always nice to, you know, take that moment to say like, Hey, you know what? You, d you don't have to always tell people this to so like, if, you know, just to say it, but like, if people are doing a good job, it's, it's good to just say, Hey man, you know, like that was really awesome what you did or keep that up. And, and one thing I've noticed, because we were talking about this off the stream the other day during the rehearsal, but you mentioned your Twitter spaces. And uh, one of the things I like with your Twitter spaces is uh, at least a bunch that I'd seen. It, you definitely have people that f other folks know in the industry, but I've seen a lot of times too where you, pe you bring up people that might not be as well known and just have them as speakers and discussions, you know, give them a platform. And a, I think that's a, a really helpful thing to do as well. And uh, I can see it's appreciated by people. Yeah. Yeah, Definitely. that's kind of the, the thing that it's kind of like my goal with it. Like, of course, you know, people want to hear from the well-known people and the people yeah, that yeah. always have questions for. But it's also good to it's also good to be able to hear like from someone new or from someone who may have a more similar story than you. Um, so that's why I try to look yeah. for like a, a diverse, you know, group of guests. And like probably one of mm -hmm. my uh, favorite guests was uh, Wellington Johnson. Okay. Um, and I think he has about like a thousand something t uh, followers on Twitter, but his, his knowledge was incredible. Like he was dropping so many like bombs or so I was, I was taking notes myself. I'm like, I did this for other people, but this, yeah, I feel yeah. like this one's for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's always awesome. interesting because I've I've found even some of our like streams and things, people who may not like be as well known in the space, they come with like this fresh energy and this like this wanting to like teach people. And they've been some of our more popular like streams like i can think of yeah. arsalan when he was on uh teaching everyone um yeah. like that's been one of our more popular streams and stuff like that like uh, people love to hear you know their their favorites in the space and and get you know more talking with them but some of these yeah, yeah. people coming in you know haven't had a chance to really put themselves out there but they know so much and they they mm -hmm. want to teach and stuff and so it's really great to get that kind of like different energy from people uh coming in yeah, yeah. for sure i agree yeah and and i bring up the twitter spaces because this is what we were talking about the other day was like <laughs> you kind of went on hiatus with them for a little bit not because you didn't want to do them but i think you probably started a new job and you probably had a bunch of things going on but i think you mentioned you're gonna be kickstarting those up again uh i don't know when but like i think you mentioned in the near future is that right yeah actually be on this one friday. friday oh okay <laughs> cool cool so the first yeah. the first one coming back is this friday and I like to do them in batches. I currently have three guests, mm -hmm. um, okay. like lined up for sure. Um, but I'm probably gonna be adding, or I probably get to around like eight, and then like take another break, especially like with the holidays and stuff coming up. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. But I do have one coming up this Friday at one p.m. Central with Rizel from GitHub. Okay. Um, so yeah, that'll yeah. be the the next one that's coming up. Nice. 
Yeah, yeah everyone no. definitely check that out. I'm wondering, kind of still in the vein of DevRel, because this is something um, that I think gets asked a lot and I see a lot. And I'm wondering what your experience has been like this. So a lot of people, when they think of DevRel, they think of someone who's like really good at, uh, say, someone who's going to work as a cloud advocate. They're like super good at the cloud. They know everything about the cloud. They become an advocate. What I've seen and what I've interviewed with before in the past with companies is that they're really just looking for someone who can teach or who can like, yeah. uh, you know, be a community minded, can be out there in the community. Like you mentioned, you like um animations me too that's kind of how i got started teaching people is animations um and then that's totally not what i do for my job so i'm wondering yeah. if you've had a similar experience <laughs> when you've either interviewed or at auto i don't know how much like auth zero sorry not auto uh how much experience you've had like with that before you got there um that's a great question and i would say it varies between because I, I interviewed for about three months with uh, several mm -hmm. different companies um, so okay. it different depending on the company, like, yeah. um, you know, one, one of the companies really wanted me to be like a super, super practitioner, like working on yeah. like enterprise scale stuff. Okay. Cause, cause, but it is not because they were like being like, uh, like strict or gatekeeper or whatever it was, just, they were saying that the, the people who you're going to be working with, this is where they're at. Like, they're not yeah. going to be okay. at a beginner level. Like they're, they're deep into the weeds with this thing. So. If you're going to interact with them, you, you're going to have to know your stuff. Um, yeah. And some companies were totally fine with me learning their product on the job. Yeah. So I think I think it really depends. But for off zero, I didn't know anything about um, identity management. Like, and thing is, I didn't even know that that was a fancy term for it. Like, I just yeah. thought it was logging in, right? But no, it's, yeah. it's yeah. identity <laughs> management. Like, <laughs> um, So I didn't know anything about identity management before I started um, at all. Okay. Um, and I learned a lot. I've changed my password behaviors. My passwords are crazy now. Uh, I remember I, I was talking about that. There, there so. <laughs> yeah, because it, it took me so long to log in. Our passwords have to be so long. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but like, you know, uh, my passwords, I, I use a, a, a MFA app now. Like, I, I don't, like mm -hmm. after like learning about it and reading about what happens, I don't play with my passwords anymore. But, you know, before yeah. that, I didn't know, you know, any of this stuff. Nice. Yeah. How do you kind of a follow up to that? Because you also mentioned at the beginning kind of this fire hose of knowledge when you first got into this job um, as someone who was like self-taught, you you know, you kind of probably have this like way to learn things. How are you handling like learning new things coming onto the job um, and how are you being supported in that, I guess, in your role? That's a great question. Um, so for me, it's about um, doing right. So if I learn, if I know what the thing means, right, if I know what a term means, then, okay, mm -hmm. what does this look like in, in practice? That's really been um, my thing. So a lot of it was, so some people just like to go, just go blindly do things and then Google yeah. it. I'm, I'm not necessarily that type. Um, I like to know what I'm doing first and then try it. Yeah. So it, a lot of it was just clicking around the off zero dashboard. Um and out, you know, where these terms meet at from, you know, what I've been learning and, and stuff like that. But that's, that's kind yeah. of been my thing. I usually like to learn, try, um, and then, you know, um, once I feel like I got a good grasp, and usually I'll go to the, the teach method is usually like my last step. Okay. Yeah. I, I think it's actually probably beneficial to hire somebody who doesn't really know your product, too. Because you know, it's kind of like when you onboard at a company and it's like, like as a developer, it's like every job I've ever gone on, you know, you go, you do that first day or week or whatever, if you're setting up your machine, okay, here's the installation instructions or do this and that. And then there's always something that's missing, you know, so you, you update it and, mm -hmm. and it's it just having that fresh eyes, like stuff that people will become kind of complacent about, like. Oh yeah, yeah, I know the the app does that when you do this. So don't worry about it. And then you know they just forget about it. So it's I, I think just having the fresh eyes is definitely super helpful too. And uh, especially a completely new space too. Like because yeah, because identity management's like a it's a pretty big space. Uh, so that's cool though. It's uh, yeah, and you've been there for what is it? Uh, just over a month now, I think. Yeah, going on. I think it was just two months. Uh sometime this nice. week the 23rd 
And okay. um, just to piggyback off of what you said about it's good to hire a new person. So I really leaned into that in, uh, in my interviews. Okay. I was like, you know, if I'm going to be teaching people this <laughs> stuff, I'm going to I'm going to know that the, the things they run into, like I'm going to see it yeah, from yeah. a different perspective and then I can uh, write the content that helped them give or get over those same things. Um, so yeah. that that's so a lot of people, the people who are looking into DevRel. So you may think yeah. that, oh, well, let me uh I don't know. I can't think of a random uh, company that has, I don't know. Let's say, let's say like Twilio, for example, like I, before yeah. I do DevRel of Twilio, let me be the greatest Twilio user of all time. Um, yeah. Yeah. You don't have, if you want to do that, that is totally fine. Um, yeah. That, that method works too. But if don't think that you have to, cause you can definitely lean on the fact that you're a beginner and you can help people, others in that beginning state for people to adopt using their service. So don't think yeah. that just you don't have the experience. Now, of course, you want to know about the company. Yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah, want to for say, sure. So, what do you know about us? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll sell magic frogs. You know, so you want to yeah, know. That's about the, the company. worst when a company reaches out to you for like an interview, and then they're like in the interview, like, "What do you know about? <laughs> I don't know. You interviewed me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you tell you, me about the company. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know y'all email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Cool, cool. Uh, yeah, I, I think we can move on to to some other stuff. But uh, before we do that, uh, I gotta say the the Os zero black hat you had on the other day. I like, I love that hat. I have to, I have to get one of those. <laughs> we might, we might have to do a, a dev slash Auth zero swag swap or something. That was hard to say. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> cool, cool. Um, yeah. So. Um, so we touched a bit on DevRel, but one thing that you're pretty excited about is you, you've been working with, uh, I guess it's a library, Framer, Motion. There's a company called Framer, and I think they do a few things. I don't know that much about Framer, honestly. Um, but this is something that you've been enjoying working with, and you liked it so much that you decided to build a course out of it. So I was just wondering if you could maybe talk a bit about you know, all that, and we can kind of, maybe we can take a peek at some of what Framer Motion is, and and uh, is is Framer different from, like, Framer is the company, but Framer Motion is the actual product, right? Is that right? Um, so, Framer, Framer is a prototyping tool, so you can, like, build UIs using mm -hmm. Framer, and then okay. Framer Motion is an animation mm -hmm. library built specifically for React. Ah, uh, okay, okay, gotcha. Okay, cool, cool. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, oh yeah, I see uh, Anthony and Christina dropped uh, some links to Framer there. So, mm -hmm. I guess uh, I'll ask maybe the obvious question, but like, why why does something like Framer Motion exist? Like, uh, it's uh, I know Christina has a lot of experience with uh, CSS and web related animations. So, like, she, I feel like you'll probably be able to speak more to this, Christina. But like. <clears throat> I guess talk. why did they create Framer Motion, and then like you know, like what's been your experience with it? Okay, um, that's a great question. As far as why I got started, so when I first like learned how to code, one of the things that did excite me was um, animation. So, but you know, I was using them in CSS. Um, yeah. But it didn't seem looking at the job market, especially here locally. I wasn't even thinking about working remote, but locally, you know, people were using. Yeah dot net on the back end with react in the front so i was like no one cared about css animation so um okay, even yeah. though it's I feel that, that pain yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it was like okay let me let me not spend too much time on this mm -hmm. obviously not, not enough people care to pay me for it so um yeah. okay i'll start looking at in, into other things so um when i started learning react um i think the first one that i started using was um react spring um, and okay. then I end up, and there's nothing wrong with the React Spring, but like Framer okay. Motion is like super duper declarative. It's it's the it it's it's the most React way to write animation. So if you want something okay. to animate, you'll just say animate and where you want it to go. Um, because you know usually in CSS you have to say like the duration, the 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 easing function, all the it's like it's so many things you have to add to make a, a simple animation. And, yep. um, you know, it can make people not want to dig into it. But with the frame of motion, you can be 
someone who knows nothing about animations and like how the the tweaks that you have to do to make them look good because it has like okay. smart defaults so you can just say animate you know scale tw two right scale it two times and it'll handle the animation for you and make it smooth and um, okay. mm -hmm. things like that yeah I, I like what you said there about smart defaults that's something that a lot of great products seem to do like i, I was at <clears throat> it's not the same thing but i was at i was catching the next js conference yesterday and they, they're just saying out of the box we give you all these defaults so like you know you can just go ahead and build your stuff and i think i think that's a great way to do things so like the fact that you don't have to configure the like the defaults of the animation like the, they're sensible like real world defaults i think that's super helpful because uh i know uh C christina's paired with me uh on because like i'm curious about animations and we mm. paired a few times and I, w we kind of went from the let's learn it in css because like and then you build from there and i can definitely understand all these these pain points you're talking about like choosing the the easing function the like the duration you know the the frames uh the the keyframes like there's a lot of things that mm, yeah. I, I think if you do it all the time it, it probably probably comes definitely more intuitive but uh having that all wrapped up into a library i can i can see that being super powerful and yeah um, uh and you mentioned it so right now because uh, uh, Anthony asked in the uh, chat, it's specifically for React frame or motion right now. Is that the case? Yeah, specifically a, a React animation library. Okay, okay, gotcha. I'm looking at the syntax and I'm like, ooh, it's a lot like GreenSock. I think I could easily learn frame or motion. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you, I'm pretty sure you could. I have, I have no doubts, really. Oh, yeah. Nice. So, uh, I, I know you had some, uh, you had like a, I think it was like an interactive tutorial you had open the other day when we were chatting. Is that something you want to kind of maybe walk us through or just show us like some of their docs or I, I can't remember what it is you had open there the other day. Sandbox. Uh, sandbox. Yeah. Right, uh, uh, yeah. Cold <laughs> sand, this cold sandbox I have and kind of go uh, over some things. And that's what I was doing earlier. I was trying to uh, load the, code on my phone so oh, i could okay. look at it <laughs> but <laughs> we'll, we'll i'll go because it ain't working on my phone so we'll, we'll see how it goes uh give me a second all right yeah no worries okay cool here we go cool. oh right, we can see the screen right all right yeah all right so i already have frame motion installed and if you want to Follow along, I can put that in oh, the yeah. uh okay, screen. cool. Yeah, you just drop can you down. also make your screen bigger, like just not bigger, yeah, sorry. Can you... can you zoom in? There we go. That's what I want. Zoom into it. <laughs> I don't know there if you can go. with this, but am I zoomed I in? Can, so. I think if you just hit command plus like once or twice, you should probably Yeah, you're on Mac, right? Yeah, or I don't know what you're in. on. Yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah, it's good. <laughs> there we go. That's yeah. perfect. <laughs> All right. Cool, cool. So, all right. I've got it open. One, two, I'm checking it. Import motion. From framer motion. Nice. Okay. I need to. And like, and like then, Will said, uh, he, uh, if you've never used Code Sandbox, he's already installed framer motion. If you look on the left there in the dependencies, add dependency mm -hmm. and just put framer motion. All right, so um, I'm missing the. Uh, so when you uh, yeah, I'm missing. I knew I was missing something. All right, so um, you want to make it a, a whatever element you're trying to animate. You want to make it a okay. motion element. And then yeah. so you'll okay. put motion on the uh, beginning and end tags and that'll make oh, it a I think motion I component i think uh yeah you got that semicolon i think that's what's yeah. complaining about that. all right cool yeah yeah there we go all right so now now that it's a motion did if you get okay. access to uh special props that framer motion has so the first prop is 
animate and with animate this is where you want the animation to end up so this is like the final state of the animation so it okay. takes a object so for this let's say x and this looks across the x axis uh 300. Okay. Anyone who doesn't know, x axis this way, y axis this way. It's yeah. like math. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Y. All right. So as soon as it reloaded, it moved the box over 300. And it and you see, had like that little bounce at the end because uh, yeah. it's kind of like good to uh, animate uh, transitions that way, like bouncy. You know, it kind of okay. it just looks better. But that's like a default. And so all I had to do was say where did i want this animation to end up i want it to end up at um 300 pixels on the x-axis and that's the cool part mm -hmm. i don't even have okay. to put like pixels or uh you know rim or anything like that i just put 300 uh, frame yep. motion knew that i wanted to do pixels and uh did it on their own yeah. so then so, if i wanted to go ahead so nick you should kind of notice this from us doing some green talk this is like the two uh okay you know, yeah, yeah. green dot two, and you can just put x or y and then put yeah. how far you want it to go and that's the end state okay mm -hmm. I, I, and i see right. what you mean will about how it's like i mean it's definitely built for react because the component is motion dot div and, and, and i'm guessing that you can do motion dot whatever html element that that you want is is that the case or is yeah. it typically yeah yeah, you can add motion to any HTML element or SVG element. So in any okay. one of those, you can uh, make it into a motion component. That's like the official oh, nice. name. They call, once you add that motion, it, be, it becomes a motion component. Okay, okay. All right, so oh, and cool. then uh, if you want to add like a, another animate another property, uh, you just hit uh, a comma and then put I put rotate, you know, 360 here. And it's the same thing, okay. a, a key value pair. And you know that's simple, right? You wanted to go yeah, over mm -hmm. 300, rotate 360 degrees. I didn't have to, excuse me, say how long that take or anything like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the next thing, so that's the final state. That's how I wanted to end up, and it's just saying animate. Then if you want to do, um, so does uh, just a quick question. So I yeah. know you were mentioning defaults, and you were talking about you didn't have to tell it how long to do. So is that one of the defaults? Like I know with GreenSock that I think their defaults like one second or something. So you don't have to say anything, but you can uh, say how long you want it to go over. Is that similar with Framer Motion? Yeah. So that's that's what I another thing I do like about Framer Motion, even though it has plenty of defaults and um, things like that it does mm -hmm. let you customize so if you if you are someone who um, is a little more versed in animations and and mm -hmm. wants a little more granular control you definitely okay. do have that option i'd say yeah, the other nice thing i noticed about this versus something like if anyone watching has used like green sock or other um things green sock is notoriously difficult to work with uh, React. I think it's gotten a lot better uh, from what I've seen <laughs> from other people say, but it can be very yeah. difficult. You have to use like refs and things. And uh, this is nice because okay. you can just put it in like the div there. Very similar syntax of what you would say to do, but uh, it's uh, much easier to get it started, I'm noticing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I definitely like that. It's it, And it's all prop driven, like for, for folks who, yeah, I know not everybody's done React, but React, I'd say, pretty popular uh but yeah mm -hmm. I, I like the the prop driven development aspect of this and and kind of what you were both saying so like sensible defaults but also if you're somebody who's like you said will or maybe it was christina being well versed <clears throat> in animations you're like yeah this is good but i wanna i wanna you know put all, all the buttons and whistles on it you know and is that the expression yeah. i don't know but uh, uh bells and <laughs> we'll whistles not, but, not, not buttons and whistles. but uh yeah no i i just like this because and you're you're being productive right away i think that's that's important yeah. too yeah yeah because uh, depending on you know what team you're on they may think that i uh, would you know it takes too much time and, and stuff like mm -hmm. that with, with this you can get in add some props um, you know, it's even something you can, you know, kind of um, just do, right? Because, you know, how yeah. there's like so much red tape, you can be like, hey, 
I added these two props and I got this hover animation and you know it looks yeah. good it, it it simulates that you know people mm -hmm. can interact with this it, it, it grabs their attention especially if you can explain the use case right so if it's if the animation is like you know a monkey eating a banana right that you know, may not be something that you can get pushed through if you'd be like hey this hover animation is uh, important when our users see this and they hover they know that they can click here and it's yeah. sensitive information or, or something like that so um it allows you to go to production fast and as long as you can explain it then um it could be something that could be adopted yeah no, I have done sure. something like a monkey, uh, but that is not as common. Very specific job. <laughs> to do. And yes, you're right. Uh, more often than not, you want these like little interactions that just make the site nicer for people, your users that are coming over the top animations a lot of times will not be good for a lot of people. Um, mm -hmm. So having these like little things that you can do just to make the experience, a lot of people are used to like the way their phones work and the little interactions yeah, yeah. that they have. And so if you can bring that to the web, um, uh, it's usually a better experience for people. So definitely, like you said, these are usually things you can like uh, get a win on and, and yeah. really like a team's kind of get behind. Yeah. And like yeah. just, um, you know, motion is natural. Like it, 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 mm -hmm. isn't, it isn't the sprinkle on top, but, you know, if you, you know, pour a glass of water, you know, you, you see the water go in and, and fill up. Motion is natural. If, exactly. if you just turned on the water and then your cup was full, it would be weird, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> and thinking about the web, when I do stuff like I click on something that maybe was supposed to download something or, you know, maybe, um, you know, go to another page or something when everything just happens like immediately like this, like, whoa, like what just happened? Or you have no sense that anything is happening, <laughs> you know, even yeah, just yeah. little loading animations like make a big deal for people and can make the experience better just so you have that like I know what's happening and it's mm -hmm. not jarring. Uh, for people so exactly yeah. right motion is the natural yeah. way <laughs> yeah i hate yeah. when i do something on a page then i have to watch the blue bar at the top go if nothing <laughs> yeah, happening yeah. on the page <laughs> yeah you're like you're like okay i just i just submitted like you know like to buy something or like i'm paying something and it looks like nothing's going on and you're like don't refresh the page because you don't want to get charged twice <laughs> or like so just exactly. cross your fingers and hope everything goes well <laughs> I can't yeah, remember exactly. who wrote about this. I, it was either Rachel Rachel Nabbers or Sarah Drasner, one of their animation books that I read, where they wrote about like if a company had, um, like if they customized their loading, like so they had this nice little custom loading, like thing while you're waiting, people would wait longer. If they just had yeah, like yeah. that default, just like loader or no loader at all, people would become impatient and not wait. And so it could make a huge deal just having something like that, where you just have this like better experience yeah. with an animation um and it looks like you took the time to do it yeah, yeah it, exactly because you know if it, it keeps your mind busy you'll you'll stay on it but if you, you know get bored and you're like uh, you know i don't even know what's going on the the chance of you clicking off is very high especially yeah. you know for me yeah 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 no i can definitely believe that and like we were talking about some <clears throat> we were working uh, talking about web three stuff before the stream but like i was making this f fun game it's an nft based game and i have like uh, a loading animation it's it's just in pure css because uh i just that's just what i did but but i make it go a little longer because sometimes you know when you have like a loader and then just blips disappears right away because like the, mm -hmm. it was too fast i know you can do like a delay before you say show it or whatever but i just added like an extra bit of time so that it's not jarring when it closes and even though it's technically slower like it just looked better you know and like and it kind of ties mm -hmm. into the i can totally see animations affecting how people perceive something's going and what one thing i can think of like I, I i don't have a windows machine anymore but like my my kids do and <laughs> i i don't know if you've seen the the loading screen of like i think it's since windows 10 but they have they have a spinner like which is pretty common but the way their spinner is it's kind of like it goes spin stop spin mm -hmm. stop so even if the computer's mm -hmm. loading super fast just that animation makes me think that things are moving slowly because if it was a regular spinner where it's just like, 
you know, you, you just, just visually, I'm like, oh, something's fast is going on, even though, even though I know yeah. as a developer that yes, they put that spinner there, I know what's going on, but uh, <laughs> it, it's just, I just found it pretty, I found it kind of interesting that they chose that fast, slow down kind of thing. So uh, mm. uh, yeah, just, uh, just got me thinking. Um, yeah. Um, I, I did have a question about uh, um, frame or motion though. Like, and like what Christina was saying, like some other libraries, it could be more difficult because you're using refs. So like for folks who may have not done that much re a React, typically you can use a ref to get like the actual DOM elements and then that's what the things do. Maybe motion does that under the hood, but I, I definitely liked how it's just the declarative component and you don't even have to worry about the refs. It, it probably sorts that all out under the hood or something. Um, but one question I had, because I think you mentioned it, Christina, about, or maybe it was you, Will, talking about, like, on mobile, you know, you expect certain things because of, like, animations and mm -hmm. stuff. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you have the answer to this or not, Will, so, uh, uh, but there's React Native, there's React Native for web. I've never worked with either of those myself, but do you know if Framer Motion offers, like, uh, does it work with React Native and, like... Uh, React Native for web, maybe? Uh, and again, I know you might not have the answer, but just throwing that out there. Uh, that's a great question. From what I understand, no, um, it doesn't. Okay. Usually, you know, if I'm on a, a forum or a YouTube video or something, and everyone is like, I wish this worked for React Native and okay. stuff like that. So I think it's strictly just for uh, the React library we use for onions on okay, uh, the web. web. OK. Yeah. Oh, and from good. a quick look, it looks like React Native made its own little animated uh, library that they mentioned, but it does look more uh, complicated than like frame or motion. <laughs> okay, anyone yeah. looking at that. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. I feel like, well, I mean, I'm sure, don't get me wrong, I'm sure it took a lot of work to, to build something like this, but I, I wonder if they're, if they're ever considering, you know, having something similar for those platforms, because I can see like the declarative nature of this, like, it, it just it just seems like a better experience oh uh, i see anthony in the chat drop the there's an issue in the framer motion repository about mm -hmm. react native support <laughs> so <laughs> feel free to check that out if you want folks um yeah so yeah so i right think we should go back to examples <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly did you did you want to see another kind of example christina or well, I think he was still in the the process here of adding more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I may be wrong. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. But... sorry, well, sorry. Well. Yeah, I could just <laughs> No, it's all good. It's I'm I'm chilling. Um so um for this, so the next thing I was gonna do is add a transition prop. And the transition prop basically means how you want to go from initial to animate. So I added the initial prop real quick when we were talking. This basically mm -hmm. means how you want to start off. When this page loads where do you want um, this element to be at? So I put it, you know, zero on the x-axis. Then mm -hmm. animate is where it'll end up. So transition is how is it, How do you want it to go from um, point A to point B, right? From initial to uh, translate or in initial okay. to animate. So um, mm -hmm. you can add in the duration, which I put one. So let's make it one second. And it's super duper slow now. Yeah. Well, I don't know what the default time is. It's probably around like 0.3 or 0.5. That's like typical for like animations. But... All right. And so now I'm going to have it repeat. Um, and then just have basically say how many times you want it to repeat. I'm going to make it repeat infinity. So it's going to keep going over and over okay. and over again. All right. So it keeps boom, boom. And you see how it has that little um, clipping effect. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go to repeat type because, you know, that re that doesn't look good. And then I'm going to change it to reverse. So now I'm going to repeat. It'll, eh, okay, what I do wrong? Because it should be. It's probably just like whether it should have quotes <laughs> or not quotes or the uh, word maybe. itself. Yeah. Hold on. The other thing in green talk, is... it's yo-yo, but I don't think that's what it, and I mean, in, um, CSS okay. it's like reverse too. So the, the other oh, thing, okay. while I need to refresh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The other yeah. thing is for folks watching the stream, the 
it, the animation might not be as crisp as what Christina and I oh, are yeah. seeing potentially. So just mentioning that uh, for folks. Just because there might uh, be. And a then I added a. Yeah. And then I added a repeat delay of one second. Mm -hmm. So now it rotates, waits for a second, and then goes back. And, okay. you know, it's a simple box, but it looks good to me. And mm -hmm. I did all of this with, you know, what, you know, six, five, five lines of code. And I have yeah. this rotating box back and forth. And that's mm -hmm. kind of what I like about frame or motion. It did all of these things. And really, all I had to do was say what I wanted to do. I wanted to last for one second, repeat infinity, yeah. reverse uh, when it does repeat, and then wait one second before it repeat. Like that was so simple and you know, lack so many details. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. that's super powerful. And that's, <clears throat> that kind of gets back to what we were saying before about, you know, just, just empowering like developers to just build it out, you know, like instead of, I mean, you still have to understand about animations, but like, like you said, if you were to handcraft that in CSS, it's 100% doable, but it's like, you're probably being less productive by doing that. And given that they probably have all kinds of other things in there and, uh, it it definitely it definitely looks like something I would I would want to try out because I am still learning animations and I I do see like the benefit like what I've been doing with Christina although it's been a while because we've been a bit busy but um, you know understanding the CSS animations under the hood I think that's definitely good but you know it's also like just being able to be productive you know ASAP I think that's that's really nice about this. Um, I'd say main, maintainability too. So CSS yeah. animations are really performant. They're really wonderful. Uh, they're really good for people who know CSS really well. But if you're working on a team of people, um, especially if you're working like a bunch of React developers, something like that is going to be much yeah. more easy to maintain uh, versus yeah. like uh, trying to maintain a CSS animation. And Nick and I have talked about this in the past. And well, I'm sure you know about this is like when you change something, in a CSS animation, you often have to change most of the timing. Like, like if you're doing a keyframe animation, yeah. which is the animation's uh, property that's called, you have to change all the timing if you want to change anything. With things like this, uh, where they have the duration, so uh, Will is showing us the duration, you can just change it right there to 2 or 0 0.5. Same with like something like Greensock. You just change the duration yeah. in one place. <laughs> much easier to maintain and work with other people in in your team if someone says hey this needs to be a little faster or this needs to be a little slower um mm -hmm. and then easier to show like that was one of the things that i always thought was most uh, like really powerful about green sock which i can see frame motion being the same was when i used to work with designers closely and they would tell me how they want the animation i could show them yeah. those like few things that you could change like just those few little things like, you know, this says X 300, you can change this if you want it to go somewhere else. And they could do it themselves, which they love because then mm -hmm. they were like, oh, I can just tweak this. That's really easy. Um, so yeah. stuff like that's really powerful, too. Yeah, no, that's a good, great point. Um, I did yeah. have s some some other questions about framework because uh, I, I, I'm like today's the first day I ever I've seen it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so like we can we can definitely have props and we can do some animations like we showed with the the box there. Um, can I imagine this is possible, but like, you know, like say I hover over the box and then I want it to animate like uh, I'm curious. We don't necessarily have to do a live coding example, but I, I imagine stuff like that's possible, like given like there's like i'm not sh i'm curious how it would work like do you still set like a motion dot div for example and then you just say on hover and then somehow that allows it to kick in or or how does it because you have the props defined on the div so I'm, I'm curious how you're able to say like only when you mouse over kind of with their api yeah, yeah. um so they have what is called gestures and you can okay. find those in the docs um and basically it's like hover, tap, on mouse, enter, like things like that. 
and you can mm -hmm. set those as a prop um, and then do the same thing you did with animate say scale to okay. rotate 360 you know whatever animation that you wanted to do another thing that i like about um frame or motion because like you know as you see i, I we've at like that example i use i've added quite a few things and then if we add yeah. a hover like that component is getting like you know real thick right um yeah and you know you don't you don't want thick components right <laughs> so <laughs> to kind of keep your components from being um you know overrun by you know prop heavy is you can create variants which is like an object that you can create outside of component and then Little define your animations inside yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah 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 I, I want the alligator one <laughs> sorry sorry folks spoilers spoilers um yeah no it's making me laugh because we got a hamster about a month and a half ago and my kids named it loki so i feel like i have a loki variant in my basement right now <laughs> 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 You do. I, I haven't seen one in our timeline. So yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Exactly. Yeah. And it, yeah, the, the, it's weird. The hamster just keeps writing TVA on the cage, and I don't know what's going on. Oh so no! It's, 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 it's starting to freak me out a bit. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Uh, so we do want to talk about. Uh, we've been talking about Framer Motion, and I, you know, we can keep asking questions here. But Will has a course on this, and I think we should transition and talk a little bit about what Will is offering to teach people with this course. Uh, I think mm -hmm. Will, Will already dropped a link, right? Yeah. Or did you? Yes. Oh, yeah, it's in, the, yeah it's in the chat. Awesome. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, I do have to say, I have to, uh, someone, Nick's used to this, keeps knocking on my door and won't stop, so I want to tell them to stop. Uh, I will be right back, but go okay, ahead and get okay. started talking. <laughs> That's it. Her kids are always trying to break into the, into the stream. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, so you dropped it, it in the course. So if, for folks who are listening, it's motion.williamjohnson.dev. And so uh, obviously the course is about framer or motion, but uh, do you want to maybe just speak a bit about what, what the course, uh, kind of what it entails and stuff? Yeah, um, so the course is we'll have, we'll have an app already done, like already okay. completed and encoded that's functional, um, but it doesn't have any animations. So okay. we'll go straight into, you know, installing frame of motion and adding the animations. The The first half is, um, I, I take it like really slow, introduce you to each like concept, okay. like each prop and, you know, what it does, how it works, kind of the different things you can do with it. Um, and then we'll go into like um, the deeper things, like how to animate, um um how to animate elements leaving the react tree how to animate okay. layouts um like the, basically framer has this thing if you have if you have a parent element yeah you can just animate that and then we'll automatically add animations to the all the child elements so it's all type oh, of nice. cool stuff like that is is what we'll get into with the course oh, okay cool cool and <clears throat> I can't remember. I think I might have signed up for the email newsletter for the course. Is uh is the course out yet, or is it you're still finishing it? I can't remember it. Yeah, I'm I'm still I'm still working on it. It's been it's been hard to record. The people <laughs> who don't know, I I have uh, and my wife has six children, so sometimes it is hard to to get the right atmosphere to record. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Christina's had that issue. I know too. that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always yeah. at night under blankets, but we're during the rainy season right now, so that it's like either rain or kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I don't have as many, and they're a little older, so I I think I have less of the problems that both of you have because I, I know Christina's <laughs> kids are younger. I think I can't remember you, your kids. You got you got some youngins and uh, older. I can't remember, but uh, but either way, they make well, noise. Not I me. Get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, yeah, my oldest is 15, and then okay. uh, the rest are like 10 and under. Okay, yeah. Yeah, my kid, what, yep. my my oldest started high school, and if that's like, I can't believe they're in high school already. That's like, oh, man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I did want to play my trailer for the course mm -hmm. for the people yeah. who may not have seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hope get it that plays on. well through the Twitch stream. And 
We, well, honestly we can link never to it too, because you have it. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll link you it too, just it so Twitter people can too. watch it. But we'll definitely play it. Uh, I just hope it comes across well on Twitch. We'll find out. But uh, yeah, we, I, I saw this. Uh, when did you drop this? It was like a month ago, I think. Uh, I watched it and I thought I was like watching the start of like a Marvel movie or something. It was pretty dope. <laughs> yeah, I, I dropped it go. earlier this month. And then, uh, all right. Here we go. Okay. Oh, wait. I forgot my popcorn. <laughs> Yeah. It's the music's definitely making it pop. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, no, I, who made yours? Did you make it? Did someone else make it for you? <laughs> n no, I'm not that talented. Uh, Voita from <laughs> Egghead made it. Okay. <laughs> Nice. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's. I was telling Will this when we were in rehearsal. That's like my favorite part of like working with some companies and creating courses is their little like promos that they create because they just make your yeah, courses yeah. look so awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, he he did a really good job. Um, and yeah, I just kind of told him like you know what because I didn't know I was like you know I just want the demo app and some code. And with this music, yeah. and he kind of did the rest. <laughs> and that's also the that app that's in the video. That's the app we're actually going to add animations mm -hmm. to. So it's just okay, like a, okay. a list app that I made, and we add animations to that of when we add items, when we remove them, when it loads, we'll be animating uh, the SVG that wasn't in the video. But yeah, well, it's, it's mm -hmm. going to be uh, okay. a really fun course. And I think that it it'll be practical where people can you know start. Add animation to their yeah. own stuff right after. Yeah, and that's a good practical project because you know a lot of people are like to do apps, but that's that's the thing you do a lot, and adding animations to them make a big difference. So, um, and yeah, then yeah. you can take what you learn from that and then apply it to other things. Like if you think of a lot of websites have like cards or stuff like sa similar stuff, like the way you animate mm -hmm. them in, the way you animate them out, uh, same kind of principles. So if you get the principles down uh, in the course that Will is doing, then you are good to go with animations. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited for this to to drop. Uh, I'm definitely going to pick it up because it's kind of piqued my interest. Um, and you mentioned, uh, I, I didn't catch the name of the person that did the video, but they, they work at Egghead. And the, just want to give a shout out to Egghead. Uh, I know you used to, do you still do some work with them or is that... Uh, or is that something that since you've moved on? Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I haven't uh, done anything else besides you know putting the course out on there. But anything yeah. else? Yeah. Nah. Still, yeah, my, still, think... still, my guys though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, I. I've been a subscriber of Egghead for I don't know five years now. I think it's just really great. I love it, and I, I think it's great that they've. Built, I think Joel Hooks calls it West Boss as a service, their platform. Yeah. For, uh, for, uh, so shout out to West Boss too. But uh, but I think that's great that they have that platform where people, if they want to build out a course like this, they can. Because I know there's a few others who've done the, the same thing. So it's it's nice to see that. Um, yeah. And yeah. That's actually like a goal of, of mine is to establish myself as like a go-to person for animations um okay and, and just like interactivity as well like react D, D is also something that i like for the okay, yeah. the drag and drop and i like that one just because you can like, react beautiful D, &D is kind of just for like trello style boards um okay like so it kind of has some restrictions but react D, &D is like anything can you know be draggable and uh moved around mm -hmm. but also so I might do a course on that, but um, you know, it's from some rustlings I heard that frame or motion is adding stuff like that. I don't know oh, if okay. it's true. So <laughs> nice. Yeah. No, it's uh no, that's cool. It's cool. Um yeah, no, it's I didn't realize that React D and D there was a separate thing. I'd heard about I knew about React Beautiful D and D. I can't remember if it's people at Atlassian that made that product. I can't remember. I know it's open yeah, source, it, it, but uh, yeah, 
yeah but i didn't i didn't realize there was like i guess they made a library under the hood and the the beautiful dnd like you said is like the trello style but the other is to just you can use it wherever and it's yeah. probably should have looked into that because i did some drag and drop in uh in the forum code base so like if if you go to like dev2 for example and you you drag a image into the into the editor it'll it'll just put it in there for you but that was all like custom code it's because there are oh, na- wow. <laughs> there's i mean there's native uh drag and drop in the browser and like I, I think what i was doing it wasn't that complicated in terms of because like i know i think like the stuff like you're talking about like the trello style where you know like pop it in between and stuff that's where it could get mm-hmm. more complex i don't i don't think i probably yeah. would have done something like that like just with <laughs> the native stuff but uh <laughs> But yeah, no, it's it's a good reminder to always check what's out there too, because uh, you know, as developers, we we do like to build things. Sometimes you know, like it's sometimes it's good to learn to to rebuild the wheel, but it's not always necessarily a good thing to rebuild that wheel and put it in production. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just like kind of what Christina was saying, you know, earlier because the you know the maintain the maintainability if. If mm-hmm. you could definitely do that, and there's nothing wrong with you making your own, you know, custom drag and drop. But yeah. you know, what are, what are the standards when your teammates have to work with it, or you know, a new yeah. teammate comes along? So having, you know, because I don't, I, when I first started learning web development, people would really talk bad about libraries, like, oh, you can do it by yourself. Why do you need it? It's a way. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like always something negative. But now that I'm, you know, in the career and I've worked with people, I'm like. I'm 100% down for libraries and standards because it just makes everything yeah. easier to work with. You can have your bespoke JavaScript uh, on your own prob- <laughs> project special. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. C- no, C- I agree. come check my bespoke uh, my bespoke JavaScript on Etsy. Buy it for twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah, no, no, I I definitely agree with you. Like, definitely, uh, if it makes sense to go with a third party thing, whether it's off the shelf or like an open source project, I would say a lot of times that's probably the way to go. You know, you, the beast. Well, I think Auth is... is a good like uh, oh, example yeah, yeah. of that. Like, a companies find that like, oh no, this is like not something we should try to put the time in to create ourselves. Let's use a third party on this. <laughs> like... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I one hundred percent agree with that because. I actually worked in identity management like about it was like six no about seven years ago and like we were I was maintaining a custom single sign on thing that we got from some mm-hmm. contractor and it was basically like every week it was fixing bugs and bugs and then finally we got an off the shelf thing this I think this was before Oz Zero existed if Oz Zero had existed at the time I probably would have proposed that but. Uh, uh, but this was in like a .NET SharePoint application. It was like a long, long time ago. But uh, yeah, but yeah, identity stuff, anything to do with security, don't don't roll your own for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I um, heard that uh, a lot too when I was learning because it's no one ever talked about security. It would it would uh, especially like when I was learning Rails, it was straight up use device and you know keep yeah. moving from there. Don't even don't even figure out what it what it's doing. <laughs> Yeah, we use devise uh, forum too. So, yeah, you you look like you're gonna say something before Christina, or uh, I don't uh, remember now. I will say, uh, yeah. um, since we are talking about animations and we're dropping courses, I just got uh, put my course out on LinkedIn for. So, if you want to learn frame of motion, uh, let's get Will's course. And if you want to learn green sock animations, uh, check out my course <laughs> that just dropped on LinkedIn. Uh, you yeah. learn what? They're very similar. You can learn both. Go for it. There you, go. <laughs> you can be nice, the, nice. the animation expert at your place of employment. Yes. yes. Which exactly. means you get to work on fun things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, comes down to. <laughs> it it honestly does look like some I I've the places I've worked at, I've never had someone at those places that like we always have designers, but there wasn't somebody like dedicated or not necessarily dedicated, but there was like animations was never something in the places I worked at and seeing some of the cool stuff I've seen you make and like uh, what we're going to build in this course. And so on. it's like, it sounds like it would be a fun thing. Like imagine if all day you're just doing like, yeah, I'm going to mess around with this, you know, have some fun. 
you know, make some cool things. You know, it sounds. Uh, that was sounds one of my favorite awesome. jobs. The company I ended up working at wasn't the best. I'm not going to name them here and it, it ended not <laughs> great, but that was still like my favorite job was being able to just, that's what I did all day. I just worked on animations. <laughs> yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah. Nope. And uh, yeah. So what was I going to say? Um, Give you a minute to think. Yeah. <laughs> nah, yeah, my brain, my brain froze. We, it, we were mentioning to to Will before the stream. Christine and both and myself, we both slept terribly last night. So I feel like my my brain's not firing on all cylinders. But uh, <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. So I know you're not finished the course. Uh, like it. Uh, I guess would you say realistically you're thinking like early 2022 or or you... um i see i mean it should be i mean well i don't know when it'll be released because once i'm done oh with yeah it, uh, it's kind of like up to ak to uh, yeah. we'll release it um okay yeah. but i should be That's done true. recording within the next couple of weeks i'm about it's, it's only gonna be oh, 11 okay. lessons um and i have about uh five done already five or six i forgot but somewhere around there Okay. About that for a second. I always find this interesting. How's your, uh, we mentioned this a little bit because you have kids, but how is your like uh, recording experience? Do you have like a certain like way you record things? Do you like, you know, try to do a batch of a bunch? Do you try to get one video done and just go from there? Like, do you have a certain way that you record? Um. So, so I, to not uh, overwhelm myself because I don't know. As, as humans, like, if I feel like the longer I record, the more I overthink. Mm -hmm. So I try to do like <laughs> two or three uh, at a time. Um, okay. Before it's like my my method. Um. So, I'll say a thing, then I'll wait until I gather my thoughts. So I'll be okay. like, first we'll import motion from frame or motion, and I'll wait. Then I'll be like, yeah. okay. Then we'll create a motion div. And then I'll wait. Like I don't try to do like one okay. perfect thing through. I just kind of go, wait, gather, you know, gather myself, and then go. And that's when I started doing that. That's when I was able to get um, okay. more stuff done because I kind of mm -hmm. took the pressure of myself of trying to be perfect. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, with was, the course yeah. that you're doing, oh, go ahead, Nick. No, no, no. It's my my brain sizzling. Go ahead. <laughs> So with the course you're doing right now with Egghead, I know in the past when I've done some Egghead videos, it was something that I edited myself. Are they editing for you um, with this course, or is this something you're editing and then they're doing kind of the rest with? Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm editing them myself and then submitting them for feedback. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that kind of makes it easier, too, because I have that long gap. I kind of yeah. know where I'm starting at, so I can just, you know, snip, snip, and move it over. No, I think that's a good point. Anyone who records, that's a good point. Uh, uh, Egghead, that was something similar I did because I would edit it myself with LinkedIn. Uh, they edit it, but what they tell us to do if we like mess up or we want to pause or something, we say rephrase, and they the sound people know like what that looks like <laughs> within the okay. sound, and so they just immediately go and like edit that out, which I think is interesting. But that also takes the pressure off of you because you could just. You talk, you say your piece, you mess up, you just stop for a second, you say rephrase, and then you keep going. So mm -hmm. same thing. I think a lot of people feel like they have to get it perfect like the first time or they have to completely start over if they mess up. But editing is a beautiful thing and you don't have to do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was curious about all that because like uh, the only thing I've really done is is streaming like on the dev stream and I, I stream on my own stream sometimes. Uh, not so much lately, but so i i'm used to the just the raw live where it's like okay well that screwed up but you know that's life you know and i haven't i've never done anything that's like a polished course or even like a polished tutorial and so it's, the it's, podcast. it's interesting yeah yeah no i did the podcast yeah that's true and I that's what levi it. says i i will yeah. you know edit this for time and flow and so it's it's a very similar yeah. thing when you're recording uh you're just doing it yourself most of the time <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 No, but it's interesting to, to hear the different techniques, like, uh, how, like you're saying with LinkedIn, they're just saying, like you say, what is it? You said pause and what? 
You just say re- so you just you have to pause for a second just so they have that little okay. bit, but you say rephrase, rephrase. <laughs> I don't okay. know how many times I said rephrase throughout my courses, but it's a lot. Okay, rephrase. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, and it's I. I am curious too, like, cause like I know, like anybody that does content creation, like whenever you see the finished product, you're like, yeah, that's amazing, but it's like. I think there's still people that they're like, oh yeah, they recorded a YouTube video or they did an egghead that, you know, but like, it's so much time to do like that five minute thing or whatever. And it's like, yeah, it's, I don't know. I got, I got to say like hats off to anybody that does content creation. Cause like, there's just, there's so many of really great folks out there and it's just, you know, it, it's just kind of crappy when people kind of just throw like really bad comments you know like you do realize this is <laughs> in a lot of cases this is free content and i spent yeah. you know hours and hours and you're like yeah thumbs down like I don't yeah know. exactly yeah and, and weird, weird things happen when you record like i remember one time i was uh recording a course and i couldn't say upload right like, every time i would <laughs> say upload i would mispronounce it like i'll be like up loud i'm like Come on, man. Like every time, you know, I knew it was coming. Like, all right, then when the app out, come on. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like, um, it does seem easy on the, the surface and to be able to the comment, but it does take yeah. a lot of, it takes a lot to uh, put yourself out there, right? Because, yeah, that too, for sure. You don't sure. know how it's going to receive. Um, you don't know, you know, sometimes you don't even know, um, like if exactly what you're saying is the, um, exact correct way right sometimes because sometimes you may yeah. have like your own mental, so it's not like it's wrong but you may have like your own mental model that may have helped you understand it um and then someone okay. else be like oh that's not exactly you know what that does or something like that so it's, it takes a lot to put in content mostly i try to um ignore negative comments unless it's you know something yeah. um you know that could make it better i remember one time someone told me that in my video i i, I typed too slow I was like, oh, okay, okay. I, I can see that it might, you know, you might be sitting there waiting for me to finish typing, but, uh, you know, mo most yeah. feedback, I, well, not even feedback, most criticism I try to ignore. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. It, exactly like you said, if it's actionable feedback where it's something you're like, I can change that certain behavior and it probably is for the better, then you take that yeah. feedback. If it's something like, I don't like your voice. Then you're just like, I'm sorry. That's the voice I was bored with. <laughs> like, watch yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be pretty expensive if you want me to change that. So uh, I look forward to your check. Thank you. <laughs> I would say yeah. something like, oh, okay, I'll use a Irish accent next time for you or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, those, those, uh, yeah, uh, the Irish. Um, now, now, I've, now I've just got really bad Irish accents in my head going <laughs> on it's like uh yeah. <laughs> anyways it also depends but, on your your audience and who you're teaching to because i remember one of the things when i was a boot camp um instructor is that i would get feedback a lot of times from students that in one sense probably would be something that i could implement but i'd also have to come back a lot of times and mention something like um like i had i can't remember specifics now but i remember there were times where someone would suggest something and i'm like this may make sense to you and why you want yeah. me to do that, but this is actually more beneficial to the rest of the class if I do this specific thing. Um, I think it was something like typing out things like they were talking about, because you said, you know, someone mentioned you were typing slow. Well, in some cases, that's what some people need. Like they want you to like yeah. uh, type. Oh, it was some students didn't want me to type everything out. Some students wanted me to. And um, okay. it made sense in what I was teaching at the time to like type everything out because they were learning everything. So it was like, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. You have to like wade through the yeah. feedback and and see who your audience is, who you're teaching to. And, and you can come back sometimes to that feedback that people say and just give them a reason why you're doing something. And then they're like, oh, OK, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's uh, I, I'm just uh, I've just seen somebody popped in the chat from uh, I think it's Chris Demars from Rocket Devrel. He's he's trying to raid us, and uh, there was uh, I don't really want to get into it, but there was like these hate raids going on on Twitch a while ago, and so we just disabled them just to, you know, just to avoid any of that. But uh, 
like anything that's good, somebody always ruins it, you know. So, boo yeah. to the to the <laughs> yeah. to the literal haters out there of people, whoever you are. Um, yeah. <laughs> so awesome. Uh, yeah. No, it's there's. I I guess one like I know we didn't come here to talk so much about content creation, but since we kind of talked about it a bit, like, what do you think? Uh, I think this kind of ties into what you mentioned about DevRel at the beginning, Will. But like say me as a you know i'm a i'm a noob and in, in, in content creation and i want to get started uh, you mentioned stuff like blogging and all that but like if i if if i were looking to get into content creation for like videos like do you have like some some advice you could give to people like uh, like i know we, not everybody can obviously af afford or, or it doesn't even make sense to buy like souped up equipment like for your first video because it you know you might get like one view you know so buying that dslr yeah. camera might not make sense <laughs> unless you like taking pictures outside of you know <laughs> yeah yeah that's true that's true um i mean really with uh the way things is you know nowadays with everything becoming like more and more digital and things coming online uh I'm gonna be honest, I don't know any, like I've seen like a list of like free screen recording softwares. So you don't necessarily have to record your face, but probably mm -hmm. like the most the easiest way to get, you know, started and see if you like it, um, just record your screen um, yeah. and, okay. you know, do, you know, just do something that that's kind of like my thing for everything. Like just, just do because, you know, like a lot of people, they may, you know, for example, take someone like Kent C. Dodds and, and see his blog yeah. post. And be like, oh man, I can't get on that level. But you know, Kent's like six, seven years in. Like, of, of mm -hmm. course, oh, yeah. you're not gonna be on that level on your first one. Um, but yeah. the only way that you get better and get to that level is by, you know, doing the thing, right? That that's how yeah. you find you. Because I'm a lot of people be like, you know, they talk about freelancing. I want to start freelancing. They be like, oh well, you gotta find your niche. I don't even know what I want to do yet, and I gotta find <laughs> a niche already. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, my uh, niche is I'm not sure what I want to do yet. <laughs> <laughs> I will exactly. do everything. Uh, no, I think yeah. that's a great point. I look back on some old blog posts that I've written in the past and it's a little bit cringe to me. And I imagine, you know, five years down the line, the ones I'm doing now will still be like, uh, you know, you you progressively yeah. get better in anything you do, the more you practice. It's like that same like, yeah, yeah that's annoying advice. Advice, but it's true. The more you do, the better mm -hmm. you get at it. You you get you get feedback a lot of times that is helpful, especially if you can like send certain content to people like you trust or or that you want to work with and things. You'll get good feedback and be able to improve that way. And then also, yeah. I think coming into it for anyone who's new is know that not everyone's gonna like your stuff, and that's okay. But your stuff is probably gonna resonate with someone. Um, and it, it be okay with it not being like everyone's favorite thing and yeah. embrace and, and celebrate those who do like your stuff. So, yeah. Welcome your tribe. If they come to you, if they're vibing with you, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. No, that definitely resonates with me. And like, even with the stream, like I, I started streaming on my own, like about, I think over a year and a half ago. And then it, it eventually, this is how the, the dev stream kind of came about during Hacktoberfest uh, last year. And you can see if you go, I mean, not that everybody's gonna watch all our old videos, but you can progressively yeah. see things get better over time. Like I also, after a while, I eventually got a stream deck just to like automate some things, you know? So instead of me going to OBS and clicking like switch screen and stuff, I can just look and click a button or like, you know, if we're, you know, like, like you're on today so like i have a button where i i write it out prior to the stream i say hey we're still chatting with so and so and then like i just press the button while i'm talking and then i don't have to worry about it, it gets tweeted out stuff like that and then you know and and just polishing stuff over time too like like you said uh you know like uh we had jay tompkins on a while back and we did this funny actually i'll, I'll click it to, you might you might be able to see it, but we had this animation that we did where this uh, sloth swings across, and uh, I don't see him. But there's a delay. Oh, it's like, I'm looking at Twitch. There's a delay. That's why. Um, but you know, just silly stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> adding the banner, incorporating the the chat at the bottom there. Like I took a a lot of stuff from like uh, 
inspiration from Jason Langsdorf because he's he's like such a pro at streaming. He's like his game is like on fire. But uh, yeah. yeah, no, it's I, I definitely like that, what you said there. Just and I kind of adhere to that too. Is like just you know just do it. You know, like tear the band aid off and. Hey, yeah. if the first one's terrible, you know what? The next one will be less terrible and then he'll slowly yeah, get better. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think also what you said right there that a lot of people can do, like, yeah, you don't want to plagiarize or copy someone's exact thing, but if there are people you admire, you can try to align your stuff similar to them at first while you're still trying to get your style yeah. or what you're, whatever you want to do. Like I had someone message me. Like two weeks ago, they saw one of my um, tutorials and they're like, hey, I really like the way you laid this out. Is it OK if I do something? So yeah, of course. Yeah, that's fine. Like and I gave them more resources yeah, on yeah. how I learned how to do that and stuff. And yeah. I think, um, you know, you can model off of what other people are doing if you like their, their style. Again, you don't want to plagiarize or copy someone exactly. But you should, <laughs> unless you reach out like this person did, I said, yeah, do whatever you want with, you know, yeah, yeah. That, that's cool. Um, but you know, that's, I think that's a good point too, is that when you're starting out with something, you don't know what, what you are yet or what your style is, what's your writing style, what's your recording yeah. style, like any of that. And so you can try to model a little bit off of other people that you have seen be successful. Yeah. Having said that, I yeah. will never add boops to our stream because like, as soon as no. I hear the word boop, all I think about is Jason Langstorff. That's like, so it's like, it's not trademarked, I know, but I feel like unofficially that's trademarked for him. So, uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. We, we won't yeah. steal boops. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Um, well, we're getting close to time there, Will. I don't know if there's anything else you want to discuss. Uh, we're definitely going to drop the, the link to your course again. Uh, I think Christina dropped your Twitters or uh, mm -hmm. I guess like where's the best places for folks to find you? I know you're pretty active on Twitter, so I'd say there, but is there other places folks should be following you? Um, That's, that's really the best place. Twitter is uh, mm -hmm. where, I, where I'm the okay. most active on. Um, so yeah, if you, you know, need to contact me, ask questions, want some advice or, you know, just want someone to be a hype man and pump you up. Twitter, Twitter would be the best place to do yeah. that. Uh, one thing that I did want to talk about, <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. uh, ahead, appreciate man. that, uh, is a uh, render ATL. Ah, okay, um, yeah. So that was the uh, the conference that happened in Atlanta in September, right? And it, yeah. it was a very special conference. It was different, you know. Had the Just wanted the all the food, the foods, the different, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm hungry. Um, Every time I saw pictures, I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, they the I, I wish I was down there. And uh and I was telling someone that like what was important like for render for me is that render cuz um you know, not to get like, you know, too deep, but like, you know, there's not a lot of, you know, black people in the tech industry. So a lot of times when we go to yeah. these conferences, um mm -hmm. it's you know, the atmosphere is of the atmosphere of the people who's throwing it, the music, the food, just like yeah, the, yeah. the entire vibe. Um and I'm totally okay with like being myself I, I never want to be like oh well i gotta act this way because i'm around the no i'm gonna I'm say the words that i say i'm a, you know dude, yeah, i'm yeah. not a i'm not ashamed of uh who i am um you know even though i might be a minority in this industry um so yeah. it, so it, it, like render it, it wasn't like i was it felt comfortable it felt like home and that's what like okay. being render special because it, it felt like a place where you know i belong to right i and, and that yeah. was uh you no, know, it was yeah. different because I've I've never seen anything like that, and that was for me sitting at home in Kansas City. I never did see. I wasn't actually there, but that's how it felt. Um, so yeah. I actually joined like the render team to like help try to mm -hmm. expand. Oh, nice. You know the things that render are doing. So they're actually right now doing meetups all over the country. They've done New York, yeah. Miami. Um, okay. Uh, I think I think another city. I know they're doing D.C. and actually were tonight, they in New Orleans? No. Yes. No. no. No, maybe not, not yet. No, least. I keep getting e yeah, I keep yeah. getting emails <laughs> from them, but maybe that wasn't them for new. <laughs> um, but uh, tonight they're actually coming to my hometown of Kansas City, um, oh, so nice. that'll be exciting. Um, I I helped organize that with um, a group called We Code KC, which is like an organization mm -hmm. that teaches uh, kids how to code, and so uh, we got the menu ready. It's going to be uh, burn-ins with pulled pork. 
peach oh, cobbler oh, and sweet potato pie. I miss pie. pulled pork uh, so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's good. Oh, man. I'm so hungry now. I, 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 like, I miss I, all the I, southern I, food. <laughs> Wait, you don't like plantain? You could have, you could have a. I do. Plantain I love the food here too. <laughs> Although Costa Rica isn't known for like their flavorful, flavorful food. Their food's pretty bland. I mean, it is like rice and beans, and uh, yeah, yeah, but we yeah. do have like plantains and patacones and things that are delicious. But I grew up in the south, and so the southern food. <laughs> when I yeah, saw yeah. all that food. I was like, oh. <laughs> No, I definitely want to check out Render ATL 2022, but I know the early birds sold out already, and I don't even know if there's tickets still. Like, I, I was potentially supposed to go this year, but just because of COVID stuff, just didn't work out. But, um, yeah. but it it looked like I, I saw a picture. It's it's Justin Samuels who's the organizer of that or the the founder of that whole thing, right? Uh huh. Yeah. 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 I saw he'd post because I follow him on Twitter. He would posted a bunch of really great, great pictures. There was uh, uh, there was a render discord that we'll just drop to. Um, yeah, I saw some really great. I think there were like short videos where everybody was dancing and then I saw the spread of the yeah. food. And I, I was just like, man, that's like that's definitely not a hey, come to my meetup and have a piece of cold pizza kind of thing so <laughs> no it looked, no it looked pretty lit look pretty lit <laughs> yeah it, it and that's the, the full because it was about because of course you know it had speakers it it had you know information but it also had yeah. the things that go on in between there that was fun too but you could you yeah. go there and you know ha have fun outside of just learning stuff like it was like the best of both worlds it was it was community and like learning and growing in your career it, it was a experience i cannot uh wait till next year i'm trying to have them add a uh, trap karaoke next year okay and, nice. uh, i mean it's it's what you think it's, it's karaoke but with trap music but yeah the crowd sings along <laughs> with you yeah you know, oh, so that, that's that, even better yeah <laughs> no that's awesome that's awesome i do like karaoke <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we dropped, uh, I think Christina and myself both dropped the render ATL. Uh, I just gave a, yeah, and definitely give Thug Debugger, that's Justin Samuels, give him a follow on Twitter. Uh, I just retweeted your Missouri, uh, your Kansas City uh, render ATL. Not that I'm going to be near there tonight, but it looks like it's going to be fun. <laughs> Please have some pull. Yeah, they also have an email any. list because I do get emails from them. So if you want to know about the meetups they're having that are coming up and stuff, there is an email list. I don't remember exactly where I signed up for it, but probably on the website. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. And I think you, I know you did, I know there was render ATL Twitter spaces like at leading up to render ATL. Are there Twitter spaces still going on for that, for like the, the different meetups or is that just like really only for the, the, the big conference or. Um, so they, the Twitter spaces are coming back. They were called render round table. Um, oh, yeah, that's and, what and those, saying. those are, uh, coming back cool, and cool. some other some other stuff too <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> awesome well oh I say... in fact that i thought about it one more thing uh, can I, yeah, yeah. so um in the in the render discord uh on fridays we're going to have uh, game nights the first one's going to be next week we're going to play a game called uh Belebrity. and if you ever played heads up it's like heads up but it has like okay. you know trap music and uh sh like trivia about the shows like the Fresh Prince and Martin and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So okay. you want to have a, a fun a fun game <laughs> night on Friday? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, now I'm just nice. picturing. Uh, <laughs> I'm just picturing Jazzy <laughs> Jeff being thrown out by Uncle Will. So he, he was always like perfectly sideways when he got thrown out the, <laughs> <at> the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's awesome well will uh, i gotta say i had an amazing time chatting with you about all these things today so just to recap we mm -hmm. uh we talked a bit about devrel uh wills started recently working at os zero check that out i think they're hiring as well uh from what I've, I've seen tweets go out so if you're interested in that check that out uh we talked about frame of motion will's got his course drop in uh it's at motion.williamjohnson.dev 
and uh, check out renderatl.com for the actual conference going on next year. There's also the meetups like Will was saying. And uh, if you haven't yet already done it, they have a Discord you can join. And yeah, I think that's it. Oh, yeah. And give, uh, give Samuel, uh, Justin Samuels, a follow, Thug Debugger on Twitter. And uh, I think that's all we got. It was uh, awesome. And Except like next Christina week, froze. we have. Oh, I froze. Well, I, I can hear you. Oh, you're back. You're back. Yeah, you're back. Great. Um, next week, we have Stephanie Eccles on. Uh, if you're interested in CSS and all things front end, definitely check out next week. We'll be talking to Stephanie. Uh, yeah, but yeah, cool, cool. thank you so much, Will. It was great having you on. Yeah, it was fun. Glad I got to chat with y'all uh, officially. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, thanks again, then, and we'll see y'all next week.